The 1990s were absolutely packed to the brim with western mech franchises, each vying for a slice of that sweet mech warrior and battletech goodness. So it's time to go back and check out one of the many forgotten forays into gaming that was Heavy Gear, a very neat mech warrior 2 mod from 1997. Okay, so it's not quite a mod, it's just running on the same engine, the same dev team and mechanics. This is because the publisher, Activision, had lost the rights to making MechWarrior games after the second one in 1994 and its expansions, so Heavy Gear became the backup mecha franchise. So what exactly is Heavy Gear? A Canadian knockoff, I mean, version of Battletech, including its own deluge of tabletop games, books and shows. I'm a layman, so the truncated story is that it's the 61st century set on the isolated colony of Terra Nova in the midst of a technical dark age, where the planet is divided between the north and south, functionally like an east versus west Cold War standoff. This leaves the largely barren deserts of the Badlands as contested no man's land, where the eponymous gears are deployed from giant land cruisers in a myriad of proxy wars. Like most Canadian products, Heavy Gear never caught the same widespread success as its American counterpart in spite of its well-described setting ripe for action and strategy titles. That didn't stop a couple of games coming out, the first of which, Heavy Gear from 1997, receiving a lukewarm reception unlike its more impressive sequel two years later. I'd like to talk about both, except they're both total fucking pains to get running properly in pretty much every operating system, even for the time, they weren't particularly stable. Although I'm nothing if not committed, and clearly I got it working, sort of. To be clear, I used a physical disc, which was needed to play, I'm not sure what the alternative would be for an ISO file. Installing the game is easy enough, you may want to apply the 1.1 patch to enable better graphical options. This only worked via a virtual PC, basically just get a shareable folder with the heavy gear installation and run the patch there. Annoyingly, the 1.2 patch breaks the game outright if applied, I have no idea how to get that working. Now the game is stuck at a pathetic resolution and will crash when you complete a mission. Use Nglide to set the resolution properly, then run the game through DX Wind, and now finally you can play it, sorta. Occasionally the game outright crashes in missions when getting knocked over, or it seems to freeze up after cutscenes or deployments, yet you can usually overcome this. It's definitely an odd game on the technical side. Besides that, there are many texture and geometry glitches, which is more likely a result of running on a dated engine even by 97 standards. Now we've got that shit sorted, what's this all about? You play as Scott, a ranger of the Northerner landship Vigilance and star pilot who gets embroiled in an ever escalating war with the South. Initial mishaps shame him, although for kind of bullshit reasons. Scott literally does nothing wrong besides kicking ass and completing impossible missions. Your objectives either center around assisting other Northerner forces or dealing with a rival landship, the Draco, in an ever more desperate series of fights. This plays into the whole war is hell theme that was popular at the time in a bunch of games and animes. It doesn't really go anywhere besides a pretty somber climax, however, it's still more interesting than the basic bitch action you expect from the outset. One such moment is early on when you're warned to not destroy the infrastructure of a neutral town. Then by the late game, you're ordered to level an entire settlement for being maybe sympathetic to the south. I just wish they did more of this outside a couple of moments. For the time, the production quality isn't that bad, there's frequent intermission cutscenes that are delivered through FMVs with supposedly actors doing, uh, acting, I guess. People get upset, angry, and overly narky or melancholic. There's also the occasional 90s CGI of the mechs doing stuff. You'd call it charming if it weren't lacking the flair and cringe of contemporary titles. It's just okay. The best effort is in the substantial voice acting for the characters as well as your numerous squad mates who have different lines for each order or when killing an enemy. I also appreciate how the menu hub is inside the vigilance, like in say Wing Commander. Heavy Gear's gameplay is a lot like MechWarrior with greater emphasis on speed and combat, playing more like a chunky FPS than pure simulation. This does lead the game to being fairly simplistic, but there's enough depth in mech customization and mission variety that keeps the game engaging throughout. Most of the 30 missions give a briefing of your tasks and some background info on the state of the war. Objectives are the usual search and destroy, defending a VIP, moving from different waypoints, and long range reconnaissance. Some operations span multiple stages, like protecting a convoy or saving prisoners, although a few sorties are longer than 5 or 10 minutes, making their failure or when the game crashes not a huge time sink. Before every mission, you can set up and customize your gear and squad either through pre-built loadouts or manually constructing your own gear, while other mech titles allowed you to change weapons, armor allocation and some minor performance tweaks, it's much looser here, closer to armored core than anything else. You select your chassis and build up from there with whatever combination of weapons and parts. 
you're only practically limited as going over the weight limit just slows you down, not preventing you from deploying. This allows a lot more freedom than you'd typically expect from a mech game with established types of gears from scouting models, heavy gun buckets, and stealth variants. In a sense, this freedom in being able to rip apart your machine and tweak it to some amalgamation is harmful to the fundamental simulator experience. The setting and storytelling is rife with realistic logistical constraints, except you're capable of creating totally unique gear variants. This is fine in, say, Armored Core, where you're an individual pilot, but a professional standardized military? It's kind of dumb. Because of the aforementioned shared game engines, playing Heavy Gear is pretty easy if you're familiar with MechWarrior's targeting systems, UI, hotkeys, unit commands, damage models, and firing of weapons. There's a pretty decent tutorial that explains this if you're unfamiliar, except there's these two. And the hunter is Cadet Timmons. Say hello, Timmons. Hello, Cadet! Good boy. Luckily, it's entirely optional. No one needs this kind of trauma in their life. The big difference of the gears themselves is the better maneuverability. Deployable treads greatly speeds up traveling. There's no heat sinks or variable speeds to worry about, and since missions are at most 5-10 to 10 minutes, expending too much ammo is really a concern, as you can always get refitted, or you can pick up weapons in the field. You can almost map out the controls to where it plays like a typical FPS. Unfortunately, the A key seems to be hardwired to the autopilot function, so unless you want an ear splitting alarm whenever you turn left, just map it to shift or caps lock. When you have a couple of squad mates in tow, it plays a bit like a tactical shooter, although with such minimal planning, you can only go from one waypoint to another. There's rarely enough freedom to set up strategies aside from calling in support. That doesn't stop the game from being fun as you fire volleys of rockets into the fog, snipe enemy weak points, drop cluster and mortar rounds, and call in allies or air support to clear the way. Your AI buddies aren't amazing, although they follow simple commands effectively and usually don't get you killed. Enemies will occasionally surprise you with ambushes or long range attacks, but the AI seems to break whenever you get too close. What I really appreciate and why I kept playing was the nice combined arms action and solid amount of destruction on offer. Missions have you fighting a mixture of infantry, tanks, aircraft, and other gears, which requires you mixing up different weapon combinations. Seeing both sides duking it out is very charming in its jankiness, and while also demonstrating the breadth and scale of the conflict far better than any text dump. Not sure if it was deliberate, but Heavy Gear is a much easier game than MechWarrior. Despite all the contextual fluff outlining how desperate your situation is, you're given too many powerful as fuck weapons that obliterate the opposition. Pulse cannons, homing rockets, gatling guns will break apart most enemies, and just when it seems like you might be in trouble, they toss in energy weapons and now it's all fucked. They have zero travel time, pinpoint accuracy, way less than other handheld equipment, and melt through armor in a single round. I just don't understand why it's like this. Was no testing done? Of course, you don't have to use them, but when the enemy starts getting deployed with them, it's harder to fall in line. After the campaign, there's the additional Tour of Duty, where you can play a near endless series of missions for either the North or South. I find it really neat the Southerners offer different mech variants, squad mates, and computer voice, though it's still the same series of attack, defend, and search and destroy tasks. It isn't that different from the campaign, a bit lacking any story or interesting set pieces. If you enjoy the gameplay loop and Forever Wars, this isn't half bad. It's just MechWarrior games already exist and are overall much better to play. Does that make Heavy Gear a bad game? Of course not. An average mech title is still more engrossing and exciting than 90% of whatever the industry churns out. Although at least they fucking work and don't have major patches that break the game. I'm a sucker for this era of PC gaming of warping textures and blocky models, and if you want that jank aesthetic in a mech game and don't mind screwing around with config files and dubious installation methods, Heavy Gear is worth recommending. Mission complete.